Bear on Bears fans, another week of the Chicago Bears podcast is here. And as always, we're starting the week off with Lance Briggs in the building. And he's got a little smile on his face. Arizona doing a little work out there, ain't they? Listen, you know, we um, up up. <laughs> both, you know, both men's and women's made the tournament. Uh, unfortunately, women's got knocked out uh, against Syracuse. But uh, the men are in the Sweet 16. And, uh, and, and, I, and I like our positioning. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with it. I see Illinois out there, too. So okay, I know you're listen, happy. I listen, know you're happy. Listen, I, it, it was funny because I don't talk about Illinois a ton, except with my, my friend group. I didn't go to Illinois. I don't yeah. cover Illinois like that. But when I was at, we went to uh, uh, Carmen and Cap did a, like, uh, uh, the radio show from one of the bars in Elmhurst. Um, mm -hmm. The name is escaping me right now. <laughs> but it was a great time. And I'm sitting there losing my mind to Illinois in the first round of the tournament in a game where I kind of knew we were going to win. Mm -hmm. But it was a little closer than I wanted it to be. And Carm looked at me and he was like, I didn't know you were this big of an Illinois fan. I was like, it's the only team in my life that I have ever legitimately shed a tear for. Ooh. It's the only team that I've watched. The 2005 Darren Williams, you know, he got money. He became Duran. He was Darren Williams at Illinois. <laughs> Darren Williams, D Brown, Luther Head. Like, dog, no, he was. I couldn't believe we lost that game. And the refs was on. I sorry, I had. Well, let's not let's there. not even start on refs because we got cheated in the Final Four against you guys in Illinois. All right, I in mean, Chicago. So I'm not can even we say that. But there was, can we was say that though? It was controversial. To say the least, it was controversial. You know? <laughs> oh, the controversy. Hey, y'all mm -hmm. can tell we're hyped up about the Sweet 16 coming yeah. up, both our teams in it. But also got to talk about uh, a lot of the things that Ryan Poles had to say today. He talked about the difficulty of trading Justin Fields, talked about what he's hearing about Caleb Williams. Maybe we could finally put some of the rumors that we're seeing all over Twitter mm -hmm. to rest on how this guy's like the devil in a quarterback's clothing, right? Like, like he seems like he's all right. And uh, also got to look at a little bit of the Keenan Allen trade. All that more in today's episode of the Chicago Bears podcast. Hit that like button, subscribe to the page. Leave a five-star review. Y'all know what to do. Let's jump into this, Lance. Let's let's mm -hmm. talk about, yeah, we, we, we ended up breaking down Justin Fields being traded to Pittsburgh, why that ended up happening, all the different mm -hmm. things that end up going into that. But you hadn't really gotten to hear from Ryan Poles on kind of what he went through, through that process of making this decision. And I thought it was interesting, some of the comments that he had today. Let's listen in and then we can break them down. One of the harder things he's had to do, but he thought that it was necessary for the Bears moving in the right direction. I don't want to go through the whole, what if Justin stayed here? What if he didn't? Yeah. Is he this? Is he that? Because he's no longer a member of the Chicago Bears. The trade is done. But yeah. do you like when you hear from your GM that he's willing to make the tough decisions to move the franchise in the right direction? Because a lot of times... We have made the emotional decision. We have made the heart decision versus making the, listen, financially, long-term, whatever it is, this is what's going to make this team better five years down the road. And I think that's what you see from championship teams, right? Yeah. The the Chiefs didn't want to get rid of Tyreek Hill, who's now the best wide receiver in the NFL, but they also didn't want to pay him that money. <laughs> so. Yeah you end up moving on from them. And I think two Super Bowls later, you go, maybe, maybe not the worst decision we could have made. Well, they were going to move on from Patrick Mahomes and, and that is their linchpin. You know, yeah. that's the linchpin. They know that with Patrick Mahomes, you can insert, you know, said receiver, insert said tight end, and you're going to have a fighting chance to go back to the Super Bowl again. So, you know, um, when you weigh, when you weigh the, the, the options there, um, it's heavily favored in the direction of the franchise quarterback, you know, and so and that's and that's really what everybody's chasing, you know. Everybody is chasing the franchise quarterback, and uh, and 
And unfortunately, you know, um, um, uh, polls has had had concluded that this isn't the Patrick Mahomes for the Chicago Bears, and yeah. and I believe that I can get him, you know, through the draft. So that's uh, that's that's what I got out of you know the 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 tough decisions and the hard decisions, um, and it is a hard decision. And it's his responsibility. So uh, you know, I, I, again, like I said, man, I've 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 trusted his decisions, whether I like them or I don't. You know, it, it, there's, you know, and I, I think when I I, I, I I hesitate to say the word sound, but it, it, to me, there are sound choices, whether they pan out or they don't, it, there is some sense to what he's doing. Yeah, and I think that's right. To me, he, he even goes on to talk about, right, it comes down to the timeline of getting Justin Fields to the point where you got to get him to, right? Because with a rookie QB coming in, you get the opportunity to say, listen, you get Keenan Allen, you get DJ Moore. We probably re-signed Keenan Allen. We add some more weaponry around you as well. You got Gerald Everett Swift, Komet, all of that. We're probably going to draft some offensive linemen for you to help you out as well. And I don't have to pay most of you guys for a while here, right? Keenan Allen's really the next guy whose contract you have to figure out because you traded him on a contract year. But outside of that, DJ Moore's under contract for a few more years here, right? Mm -hmm. Matt just got signed. Gerald Deverett is a, you know, he he's a, a a quick piece that if he works out, you keep him around. If he doesn't, he doesn't. Uh, DeAndre Swift's here for a couple years. Financially, it opens things up for you to make long-term decisions versus <coughs> just, you don't figure it out this year. We got to pay you $25 million. You got to figure it out this year. I think that it's, Right. It, it, it leans more towards while this is a difficult decision to move on from a player that he talked about. Right. Loves son has his jersey in his room that he thinks made strides at the end of the year. That's a setup. That's a setup. That's a you know, setup. what I mean, that's, that's 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 buttering, buttering up the media. You know, what I mean, listen, love the guy. He got his jersey up in my room, <laughs> you know, you know, I, I hated having to get rid of have his jersey up in my room. All right. <laughs> <laughs> does, does, uh, does Tressman have your jersey up in his office if, uh, if he needs to get back in touch? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No. If he, if he does, he had to buy it, right? He had to, he had to, he had to, go had to special order that thing, man. <laughs> and I do, I do think that there was a, a, a liking of Justin Fields, and I do believe that they believe he made some strides at the end of the year, but right, like it does come down to the long term of this team. I have more mobility financially if I go with this young guy who is coming into the best situation a quarterback may have ever come into in Chicago. Well, you know, what are, what are your strengths? What are the strengths of your coaching staff? What's your coaching staff saying about this guy versus that guy, you know, and who you believe gives you the best chance to win because uh, it doesn't matter if you like them, you dislike them. If it's about, um, um, long-term money, short money, you, you need, you have to have the guy that's going to help you win. Yeah. All right. Cause in the end, that is the, that's the play. You know, if, if, if he kept uh, fields here, he kept fields here and fields had a successful year, you know, put up crazy Nobody's numbers this year. About the 25 million. You don't worry about that there. You know, well, <laughs> Chicago's still going to be like, you're paying him too much. You know, and then he goes out and balls. You're like, all right, he, he did win us a Super Bowl, So it's, it's legitimate now. <laughs> You know what I mean, uh, market value, market value, market you know, value, there market we go. value, market value. <laughs> you know, but but uh, uh, you know, it, if 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 it if it were to work out, you know, what I mean, I, yeah. I think there's just a, just such a short, shorter window. But if it works out, you know, you're you're a genius. If it doesn't, you're fired. You know, like well, who's next? You know, yeah. so and it's uh, that happens too often here in Chicago. So I think sometimes you you go with the road, you know, probably more traveled in this situation rather than the one less traveled. I do love the fact, though, right, you bring that up. He, he's not operating like, if I make the wrong decision here, I'm fired. I, I do love that about this because I feel like, right, drafting Justin Fields was, if I don't get the quarterback position right, I'm fired by Ryan Pace. Guess what? You, you're fired. Yeah, you know I mean, you got fired anyway. Uh, not playing Justin Fields was if we don't win games, I'm fired by Matt Nagy. Right? Like I feel like so often we've operated back against the wall. Versus now, it feels like listen, whether we like the decision to trade Justin or not, 
there's some wiggle room here in a lot of different directions for you to go. Even the fact that, right, mm -hmm. he's talking about he's going and just doing his due diligence in all of these areas. He's going to be at the Jaden Daniels LSU Pro Day. Uh, mm -hmm. Won't be at the Drake May Pro Day. He talked about that. But that Drake may uh, that the Bears will be represented. Kerry Joseph will be there. The coach who's probably going to be working with this guy tomorrow. You're not. You're not doing another. Uh, you're not doing another UNC ten. No. 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 He said, yeah, yeah, I won't be at this one as a, as a sign. All right. Uh, but we'll have a representative there. And I said, come on, buddy. Hey, listen, I'll take what I can get, Lance, because the worst thing in the world to me is that we had a GM that went full Sith Lord on us, right? He's like, you know, I get this Trubisky guy pulled up in a Toyota Corolla and uh, <laughs> nobody noticed me. Nobody recognized. Well, hey, hey but <laughs> just some dude in the stands. Aren't you Ryan Pace? No, no, I, here's $40. Get away from me. <laughs> man, I feel like, I, I, you know, in situations like that, I feel like that's those are one of the main reasons why a guy like uh, myself and Alex Brown aren't. Are never in those war rooms, or never in, the, in 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 talks, or Olin Cruz, never in talks to be in those type of evaluation positions. Because yeah. when we get into a situation where, uh, um, let's say uh, it's Ryan Pace, he's like, "Hey guys, really like this guy, Mitchell Trubisky. You know, he's going to be met with three guys in the room that are going to say, "Hell, no." Like, yeah. no, he's not worth that. He's not worth this. He certainly as hell is not worth the haul that you're willing to give up for this kid. I'm like, let's break this thing down. You're doing this yeah. based off of what potential? You know, yeah. we have to hit we have to hit the home run here. The, the sun bowl. <laughs> yeah, man. He's doing it based off of the sun bowl. <laughs> so you're gonna get you're gonna get a lot less pushback if you don't have guys like us in that room that are that are gonna tell you straight up you're yeah. you're you're wrong with this one. And that's and that's what I love, right? Ryan Poles has different opinions in the building. It, it just feels like the Bears are actually finally going about doing this, the, the way that most teams in the NFL did it, right? Like, I, 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 we talked about me and my guy, a uh, kid, were talking about it. And it was like, when did you know Ryan Poles seemed like he was different? It was like when he hired an assistant GM. Like nobody had ever done that in Chicago before. It was like, hey, I might need some help, dog. Like this seems like a big job. I mean, I don't want it to just be my voice lording over everything. Well, yeah, and you, then you know, you 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 mix an ex football player with yeah. Boston College too. You know, what I mean, it's you got it, O lineman. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, O lineman. They're they're not they're not winning any any beauty contests. You know what I mean? Like they're they're they're, they're they grunt and they grind and and they're the unsung heroes a lot of the time. A lot of times we see the receivers, the running backs, everybody doing their dance. Yeah. You know, and it's the linemen that get them there. So. Um, there's some, there's some humble pie, I think, uh, humble pie beginnings there mixed with, mixed with smarts. Oh yeah. Gotta love it. Love, love what Ryan Poles is doing. Love how he's going about this and love that he, I, I personally love that he's willing to make tough decisions that all of us feel are some tough decisions, because I think that's how you do end up building long-term championship teams and not just fun teams that end up, you know, lasting for a few years. And then you go, all right, what the heck happened? Like we were, we were in the Super Bowl. We, we were holding up the trophy, and now we, we haven't seen the playoffs in three years. Like, what's going on there? Well, the unfortunate thing about that is that, you know, he's, you know, as good a job as we have, are watching him, you know, perform right now, it's it's all on paper. Like, it's – right now you're creating – yep, yep, you're creating paper champions, man. Yep. And, I, and I hate to say that, but they have to go out and they have to still perform. Yo, you know, yeah, that's facts. The things that, right. This is heavily weighed on. Listen, you can go get Caleb. You can have all these pieces. You can make all this stuff happen. The guy that puts the chess pieces in place is Shane Waldron. Was that the right hire? Because there was a lot of names out there that we looked at and we were like, I'd go with him over him. I'd go mm -hmm. with him over him. But Waldron was the development guy. He was the guy that has developed and helped multiple quarterbacks along to get to the point where you looked at. I mean, listen, Geno Smith was he, he was bad. Like, <laughs> He was a bad quarterback in New York, and he was not a bad quarterback at all out in Seattle after working with Waldron. So, all, all quarterbacks are bad in New York right now. You know what <laughs> I mean? Like it's, it's you know, bad. It's, bad. <laughs> it's bad out there, man. It's and they bad. may not take a QB. Like that's the funniest part about this. I keep seeing these mocks, and it's like running back, wide receiver, mm. offensive lineman. I'm like, who's throwing the football? I can deal with offensive linemen, but they got nobody to throw the football. I feel, to. I feel, I feel worse for for the defensive players, man, because their defense can they they kick ass, but 
Man, it's like man. it's like, and they're talking about drafting what? What? Oh, another tough year for us defense, man. You only last so long. Yeah. How how do you feel right when you look at the defensive side of the ball in all of this? Because I feel like we focus very much on the offense, but Poles did make some interesting additions to the defense. I think he's still going to make some in the draft as well. Yeah. How does the defense help a young quarterback to develop? Because to me, the one thing that I said, the only thing Ryan Pace ever did right for Mr. Bisky was he went and got Khalil Mack. Because that allowed him to start off <laughs> on the 40 more times than not. <laughs> no, the best thing he did with Mitch Trubisky is when he got rid of him. Okay. When it was when it was, oh, okay. it was time to move I mean, on. For his successes. I didn't mean right. <laughs> yeah, well, for his we moved, he moved out to Pittsburgh and found the same type of success <laughs> that he had here. Um <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey man, he did love throwing know? in the triple coverage a lot. I'm not yeah. gonna lie to you. It was it was impressive. <laughs> like he did he right, went to Pittsburgh and did more of the same. <laughs> yep, he went there and did more of the same, man. You know, it's listen, it's not a knock on his character. We're just talking football here. You're just talking you know? football. We're talking football. But how 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 can this Bears defense help whatever this young quarterback is coming in uh, um to, to get off to an easier start to his career? Mm. More opportunities. You know, um, defense can get the ball back for you. Defense, shoot, defense can win games for you. But oh, defense yeah, we, can certainly put that. you in, you know, be, but it, defense can put you in scoring position. Special teams can put you in score, scoring position. So, you know, the, the more opportunities that, that the new quarterback will have in this offense, the more opportunities he'll have to grow, to see different looks and different things and to mature, you know, maybe mature faster or show us how great or, ungreat he is or can or can be you know we're, we're looking now that you're bringing in a new a new guy you're looking for uh you're looking for you know obviously you want to have a, a, a fast start but you want to look for growth you want to look for the potential of where this is going to lead to you know and and we as much as we want to win this year we do need to win we do we certainly need to compete because we are, there's talent there there's going to be some times where you're going to have to say okay well He's new. You know what I mean? He's new. Yeah. He's young. That's a yes. That's just a rookie mistake right there, man. He's going to get better from that, you know? So it's, there's some, there's some things here that, that, that are going to come into place with having a new quarterback that's coming in, but your defense can continue, can give them as many opportunities as possible by getting the ball back. Yeah. And I, I think that that is kind of the best thing that he has going for him. It's not just the offensive weapons. There is Montez Sweat. On the other side, there is right to pressure the quarterback. You've got mm -hmm. hopefully Javon Dexter taking a step in Pickens and Big Bill in the middle. And maybe we see a resurgence of Demarcus Walker. Go get somebody for that other end. That's all I'm saying. But maybe we see a resurgence of Demarcus Walker. But you got DBs out the wazoo. And the one DB that you had this year is Kevin Bayard, who's got 28 interceptions and is mm -hmm. an absolute ball hawk back there and has been the pinnacle of health, which is something, no disrespect to Eddie, that we haven't had opposite Jaquan Brisker for his career. So that may, you know, be, be a big help as well. Uh, let's get to our road to the draft brought to you by Toyota. <laughs> let's go places because we're talking about the young quarterback here. And I think the one part to me that is interesting is the narratives that come out around draft time, Lance. It seems that we can't build players up. The only way that we can talk about players is to talk about how um, they, that they cry to their mothers, and that means that they are terrible football players and have no skill, that uh, they paint their fingernails, that uh, their teammates all hate them, and uh, there's uh, no success for this guy's career coming in the future. And they say that about players? Do they say that about players? Oh, man, listen. listen I, I don't know if you know this or not, but there's a quarterback that the Bears may be selecting that uh, basically on Twitter seems like uh, his teammates think he's the devil, and yet I've been looking – I don't know if you watched the pro day at all. I was like, they seem to like him. Like, I don't know. Maybe it's me. They really seem to like this guy. And then I looked at the draft. I was like, why well, they seem to like him still? I don't know. We got a chance to hear from Ryan Poles on his teammates and his coaches and how they feel about Caleb on the team. Let's hear what he had to say and get the reaction.
Seems like everybody likes this guy, Lance. If they don't, they are doing the greatest job of masking it that I've ever seen in my life. You got a skeptical look on your face, Lance. Is this just draft fodder? Or do you think Caleb's probably the guy that Ryan Poles believes he is? Well, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm glad to, to hear that from the teammates, the coaches and all that, because, you know, um, this is a, this is a young man's life, Yeah, you know, this is a young man's life. And yeah, you want to, you want to give an honest assessment about things, but you don't want to, um, you know, as a teammate, for a teammate, you know, and I, whether I like the teammate or not, if, if someone were to come to ask me about that guy, I'm, I'm not going to put negative energy out there about this guy. Because this kid, you know, has an opportunity to feed his family and and build his career. This is how he will provide, you know. And I've I've seen cases where people have said negative things about somebody, you know. Uh, shoot, I've had people say negative things about me, you know, in and um, in in college, and 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 a lot of it just wasn't true, you know. And I'm like, man, how, how you know, I you're somebody who I confided in, I would trust in. And now, you know, it's like you, you're saying something that's going to hurt my draft status. It's going to hurt my ability to come out and provide. Like, this is a big deal, you know. <clears throat> so it's, it's, uh, it's, it's good to hear that stuff, you know. Um, and you don't need to <clears> – <throat> if, you, <clears throat> if, if you really do your homework, you know, um, the stuff that people are saying, yeah, you can hear all that stuff, it's all, but it's all out there. Everything you yeah. need to know, everything you need to know about somebody is out there. You know what I mean? It doesn't, it's not hard to figure it out. If you're a football guy, it's not hard to figure out what type of personality you're dealing with. You could have a conversation with somebody. You ask them a few questions. Shoot, when I was uh, when I was at the Combine, I mean, having a conversation with Ron Rivera, you know, I had a conversation with Mike Singletary. There were there were there were some 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 heart to heart questions that they wanted to find out, you know, and 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 some of the response, especially from Ron, was like, listen. Some of the coaches feel like this about the decision that you made. He was like, I feel like you're a convicted person, you know what right. I mean? Which means you're a man of principle and I, and you stand on your principle, you know? So it's all in perception and how you feel, but you can learn about somebody and know enough, you know, um, um, by having a conversation with them, spend a little time. It, it, and I think that's, that's why I love, and I think it really shows who the bears are looking to go after, right? The fact that we <laughs> laugh about it, but the fact that they're not going to the UNC pro day, probably tells you what they feel because Ryan Poles wants to meet with the guys that he seems like he's going to want to bring into the building. Jaden Daniels is another name, <clears throat> excuse me, that came up um, when we got to hear from the uh, assistant director of college scouting, where he said that when you want to sit there and talk about guys who are able to make the anticipatory throw, it's Caleb Williams, it's Jaden Daniels, and then J.J. McCarthy is somebody who sneaks in there as well. The fact that they're going to Jaden Daniels pro day probably means we want to meet with this guy because you're not getting a ton. I love the think pieces that were written from Caleb Williams pro day, right? Like this man's running around in, in, in basketball shorts and a t-shirt. And yes, he's throwing deep balls, but I, I saw him do that with a defense trying to tackle him. I saw him do that with real pressure going up against him. I don't need to see you do it in basketball shorts and a t-shirt. The part that they get most from that is the conversation that you get to have with him the dinner we heard that the bears met with him for dinner the night before like i think that those are the more important things to see and it really tells you kind of who they're leaning towards uh, uh when you when you find out that ryan poles is pulling up personally to sit down and talk with some of these guys yeah yeah i'm you know it's that's that's their job you know that's their job is to evaluate you have a you have the number one pick in the draft yeah you you've got you have to 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 look through every nook and cranny, you have to have as many answers as possible when it comes draft time. If I'm going to take this guy, this number one pick in the NFL draft 2024, I need to be right about what I'm about my decision. Yeah. And, and the fact that, amazing. listen, that they're doing it. Like I, again, I, I keep going back to the previous, but like, you know how many people probably wish they went and had dinner with Pat Mahomes? <laughs> Or like I mean, paid attention to anything that well that that college. year that year shoot at least eleven teams would have would have passed on it you know at least eleven teams would have passed on it so <laughs> yeah were, man like it's mm -hmm. it's just seeing seeing a a organization seeing what the Bears organization has become as far and do as far as doing their due diligence from how far we had fallen I mean look, I I just I I love that <laughs> to to see us going yeah. through these processes like this yeah look you know. If, we, if you want to go back that far too, you know, you got to look at look at Deshaun Watson. 
you know, uh, you know, I know that there's been some off the field issue stuff, but you know, he's he's been back on the field since all of that. And when you look at him on the field, you know, he's a guy that can lead your team to a Super Bowl. Yeah. You know, and so that was a guy that the Bears didn't even go look at his workout. They didn't even go to his workout. Didn't you pick know up what the mean? phone. They didn't pick up the phone, you know. So there's been years where, you know, you if you if you get a pick this high, you have an opportunity. Why aren't you doing the work that you're supposed yeah. to be doing? You know, now I I completely, uh, you know, I don't disagree with with their stance on Drake May. I, I you, they are sending somebody there. Yeah, they are sending somebody look. there. They're Just definitely look. sending somebody there, but he's not in that. He's not at the top of Ryan's list. The girls that are at the top of his list is where he's going to put his eyes on. But I think even right, like where Ryan Poles comes from, when you think about coming from Kansas City, they didn't send the best guys out there to look at Pat Mahomes. They they, they said, yeah, I mean, like they said, what was Nagy at that point? He was a he was a, a, a control coach, quality control, something like that. One of the control mm-hmm. coaches. I and, and he came back and he was like, oh my god, you need to take this guy. Like, you know yeah, I mean, like maybe yeah. it does end up working out that way, but you can't do that unless you just send somebody to look at the guy. Right, right. If you don't send anybody, you don't pick up the phone. You know what I mean, and 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 then you end up, and then you end up looking around, and you're like, whoa, you know, he's another guy that's at Houston, Texas, he's balling right now, you know, and, and so yeah. it's it's a process, man, and it's it's you know they get that's why they get paid the big bucks, Pat. It's our history, man. It's our history, and it, it seems like the the evaluation took a nosedive after uh after they they put the 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 06 super bowl team together it was just like ah we just find guys yeah i mean we just we just look at them we just figure it out i mean listen there was some names that that was that was picked after that i mean listen no disrespect to anybody but uh there was an offensive lineman with a bad back in there and uh you know Um, gabe karimi uh yeah not, not the same guy i just i gabe karimi was the bane of my existence when i saw him on the field and i was like i think i got bigger legs than he do Yeah, well, <laughs> poor Jay. Yeah, yeah, poor I'm, Jay. That's all I can say. Poor Jay. I, yeah, I like creamy. You know, it just things just didn't. It just didn't work out, my friend. It just I didn't go work out. I feel you. I feel you. Uh, let's keep this thing moving along. Lance, on the better days. I, I do. On the better days. On mm-hmm. the better days. And me and you both having some good days here. Is we got a couple of teams here in the Sweet Sixteen trying to get to this Elite Eight. Have you been watching much March Madness and uh, how much is too much March Madness? Not enough. Listen, it's <laughs> it's it's two fan or two to two and a half, two, three fantastic weeks of oh just intense, intense, nonstop basketball. Um, you know, before we get into our teams, did you see uh, Stanford, Iowa State last night? Listen, listen, I was praying to the high heaven. That Stanford pulled that out because I like how we match up a lot better against Stanford than man. Iowa State. <laughs> man, like you know, they had the uh, the young girl Adi Crooks, and then you had Cameron Brink. They both fouled out at the end and triple yeah. overtime. It was uh, it was it was exciting, and I know it was it, for anybody that was on the 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 in Central and East East Coast time. It was probably midnight or one o'clock, but it was a little it was late. A, it was a it little was late. late. It was late, yeah. but it was a heck of a game. Man, when I tell you, I'm not going to lie to you. I've probably been more locked in outside of Illinois and like the teams that Illinois is going to have to match up with. I've probably been more locked in on the women's than I have the men's this year, just because of the names that are in it. You look at, I mean, Caitlin Clark, watching what she's doing is just, yeah. She, she said, I'm not slowing down. It is what it is. But even Angel Reese, right? Like Angel Reese is not having the tournament that I thought she was going to have. No, and and shoot when um when uh Cameron Breen got put out, they they're talking this this uh, young girl Kiki or, or I don't know her last name. I ain't gonna mess it up. But she came, <laughs> you know, she put up forty points, and they're like, she's the girl that's she's going. To, the the torch is getting passed to her next oh, year from uh, from USC. You no, from about- Stanford. That's Juju. This girl from Stanford. Oh, from Kiki. Stan- oh, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah she brought him back. She brought him yes, back. yeah, yeah. So it, it it is exciting, although the bo- the men's the men's has been exciting too. Oh, the yeah. men's has been exciting, and it's about to really pick up in Sweet Sixteen. I Kiki, man, I would hate that I'm gonna try to pronounce his name. I feel like I got it. Is it Kiki Irifin? Yeah, uh, nope, but that's not well. That's not the way they pronounced it last night. 
That no, that, you got that, the, that's why. I, yeah, but I, I, I keep, keep it a Kiki though. Kiki, you got that down. Hey, listen, she <laughs> Kiki. Nick, yeah, he was. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. but no, I mean, like we have seen. This has been one of the best March Madnesses that I've watched in a minute. Yeah, because there's mm-hmm. so much intrigue on both sides. Normally, it's like. You know, maybe you got some nice teams with the men's team, right? Like, or, or yeah. you know, you got, like, for so long, mm-hmm. we were seeing the same team on the women's side win. Yeah. Now you're getting so much parity from it. I think this may be the best March Madness that we've had a chance to watch. And, I mean, like, you got, right, as we're recording this right now, um, Ole Miss and Notre Dame are underway. And okay. I got, I got, it's right here. It's right okay. here. I, it's left okay. eye is on it. Okay. You know what I mean, so, yeah. so keeping an eye on it at all times. But we got Illinois, we got Arizona in it. Who right now do you have rounding out your final four? I know that you're going to be Arizona's <clears throat> going all the way. There may be some phantom calls in there, but who are the other three that you see making it right now? You don't have nothing Arizona. The phantom, you phantom. Were looking for. No, I was looking for my uh, my um, my oh, bracket. bracket. I was looking for my bracket because I don't want to, you know, like I want to be precise about what I picked, you know, and um, you know I have Arizona uh, in the final four. Oh, yeah. Okay? That's one. Um, shoot, Houston. I have Houston in there. Yeah. Um, that's for sure. Um, dang, Houston got to go through Duke. That's gonna be a that's gonna be a fight. It is. Houston it is. Versus Duke is gonna be a fight. It is because you know the, the one of the, the 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 equalizers, man, is that is those big centers. Duke has a huge center, and Purdue's got a huge center. Now <laughs> this is now this is one thing I must say. Now, okay, um, I like Arizona's chances against both of them. All right, they already beat Duke, so you know they can do it. All yeah. right, and we we lost a tight one to Purdue, but I, but but I, but I like our chances against them. Okay, I like our chances, so it's uh it's gonna get interesting. What, what about who's in your top four? Your final four? Uh, I think I got my final four right now, and I didn't. I don't even know if I my bracket was destroyed the, the second I did. I only do one bracket every year, um, and and I pretty much am just like I'm not doing the like 17 brackets where you got different outcomes in each one. Okay, so okay, so what I do, this is this is what I do, and I, you know, I, was, I, I I filled it out with my uh, with my my youngest son, yeah, and I say, listen, why don't you start instead of starting from the beginning, start from the beginning, from the end. Who do you think will be will make it to the final four? All right, and then once you pick who you're going to make from the final four, then you can get a little riskier with the yeah. the picks beforehand, you yeah, know, because yeah, yeah. then it's like, all right, if they lose, they still won't get to the, this team, you know, so it's uh. So That's who's your not final four? Hey, mm-hmm. listen, I had I had Auburn getting past the first round. I thought they could get through Yale. Yeah, you know I mean, I thought I thought they could get through Yale. Yeah, but whoever they won that next round, they weren't going to beat the next. Team. They wasn't going to beat them anyway. They're not going to beat the next could get team. Yale. Yeah. Uh, my final four right now. I've got Illinois uh, yeah. in the final four. Of course you do. Um, I've got. I'm a, I'm gonna give it to you. I got Arizona in there. I think I think we may be matching up again, dog. Yeah. That's that that's that 05 matchup. Wasn't it? Like, I think Let's make sure was... we don't have the same officiating crew. <laughs> Listen, it, hey, hey, I mean it was fine for me. <laughs> it was fine for me. I was that's fine right. with it. That's okay, because you know what? Final four, guess where the final four is this year? Phoenix. It is oh, in yeah. Phoenix. It's in hey, Phoenix. Me, my guy was like, my guy was like, hey, we should go to the final four. I was like, boy, them ticket prices for that final four. I'm not going to that. Uh, I was like, we could find a bar near nearby. Right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, right. The money you got, you gonna have to have to get into the building for that. But I do have. I, I think y'all can get through because the bracket that y'all are in right now, you got to beat Clemson. Yeah, and then you got Alabama and North Carolina on the other side. I'm pretty sure that Arizona has, I, I like the talent that Arizona has to get through all of them. North Carolina to me, I, 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 we were talking about this before, a lot of interesting seeding. Not that North Carolina shouldn't have been a number one seed. Um, I think that they're they're a really good team. I think that they run the floor really well, defend really well, but like... I think the Mountain West got robbed a bit. A little bit. A little bit. A little bit. bit. A little bit you know what I mean? You know. Like, it was, it was interesting to mm-hmm. see them at the top with some of the teams that were in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I do have, I'm going to tell you this one right now. My guy... Marquette is showing me something. Shaka might be in the final four again, man. 
Marquette is showing me a little bit of something here, dog. I want to see this. I want to see this six, Sweet Sixteen. How they how how they play this Sweet Sixteen first? Yeah. But yeah, they 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 were excited to watch this uh th- that last game. Mar- Marquette is like just just the fight and the like. Listen, you it, it, every game is going to be a dog fight, but we're going to find a way to get it done in the end of it. Like seeing that yeah. through like three rounds to this point, I'm yeah. like, all right, I like what I'm seeing from Marquette. <coughs> And then I got I got Purdue rounding it out. I don't I, I think Zach Eady is ridiculous. He is you so you know what I've I, you know I, I really noticed with these with the big guys. With the big guys, you know, it, they the the opponents, they just they they'll run the pick and roll on them all day long. Like you know what I mean? And that's where he's and gonna, it's nothing you can do. <clears throat> right, because they, they just don't move fast enough, you know what I mean? And he bends his legs and and when the defense comes, they run that pick and roll. Now the one thing about him is he's so doggone big that that if you run a pick and roll on him, you would have to get that ball over, or is it, or or you're gonna have to get it under. But get it more more likely, you got to try to go under because he's too doggone big to go over. It's it's the it, listen seven foot four. I mean the fact that he can kind of do it from anywhere definitely slower, yeah. right? He's not Wimby out there. I'm not sitting there saying that he's that yeah. level, but like. He can he can shoot the J. He can get downhill. Yeah. Coming off the screens, there's not much that you can do for him. Like he's the kind of player that you almost have to just say, "We got to shoot you out the gym." Yeah. And especially like I'm not gonna lie, the the one team I'm worried about. Not to say I'm not worried about Arizona, but I mean, like if we get to y'all, I think it's I gonna think be, be right. It's gonna be a competitive right. game, right? It, it it'll go one way or the other with that one. I don't know how because uh, um, Terrence Shannon Jr. drives to the bucket so much. I'm like I I don't know how we would beat Purdue. <laughs> like now, if we get to Purdue, we would be in the the national championship here. But like, yeah. I'm just sitting here, like, yo, I, I, like I don't know how anybody, like, he takes away the paint. That guy, like, listen, that guy that. from that center from Utah State looked defeated. Like every time, <laughs> that boy's bad pouty face, man. That boy was like, oh, he scored on me again. Hey, oh hey. god, <laughs> because it was like at a certain point, and I mean. This were you did you ever have that that game as an athlete where you looked across and you was just like there's nothing we can do and we have a long way to go. Yeah, yeah. It was, <laughs> you ever played against the Patriots? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, Patriots. I forgot about the 50 burger. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. I'm like, man, yeah. we gotta check our camera system because they know everything we're doing, dog. Well, I mean, listen, that could have also been the case there. I mean, it could have mm-hmm. been a little bit of that chicanery going mm-hmm. on as well. But like, dog, it was like eight minutes in the first half, and the center for Utah just looked like, yeah, you with this? <laughs> oh my goodness! So they had a, they, go. they they would zoom in on him like right after TV timeouts, boy. He would look everywhere except at that <laughs> Edie boy. <laughs> I just I. <laughs> <laughs> now, the one thing that I will say about Illinois that, like, I do think gives them a little bit of opportunity is you can kind of do a little bit of blitz with them where you bring somebody off of the edge uh, mm-hmm. um, and try to, you know, get Edie back to the basket, not paying attention. You bring Coleman Hawkins over for help, try yeah. and swipe at the ball. I think it, I think with Edie, though, it does come down to a game of refs. Are the refs going to be all on his side? Are the refs going because I mean, listen, it's a foul one way or the other on every play, right? It's, I've been they uh, to me they've been letting guys play a little bit. I really like that. I really like that. I hope they continue with that. Basketball needs that. The sport of basketball needs that. You know, yeah. let's let's do away from that with the soft stuff. You know, what I mean, we've had enough soft stuff. The Euro players are here now. It's time to get back to you know American style ball. You know, yeah. let it be physical. Hey, listen, they're they trying to do it in the NBA. I think they're doing it a little bit more in college now as well, where they kind of like, hey, look, we changing some rules back. Like, y'all scoring too easy. <laughs> Luke, Luca's breaking triple-double records four years in. Like, this don't make no sense. It's like, silly, man. It's silly. Uh, it's who's, silly. who's been your surprise at the tournament so far, even if they eliminated already? The team that you were like, wow, they 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 actually uh, played like I had, than I thought they were. I had, I had uh, New Mexico going farther. I actually had them going uh, into the Sweet 16. You know, mm-hmm. they laid an egg in that first one. Yeah, um, I had Nevada going further, too. You know, they got blown out, you know. And so um, those were teams – those were those were the Mountain West teams that I thought were going to, you know, we're going to show up a little bit better. Um, <clears throat> I think 
Uh, you know what? Surpri- uh, 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 the the pleasant surprise really is, is is Illinois. You know, I mean, I was like, I know they had a good year this year, but yeah. they're they're a team that you know it's an easy team for me to root for. You know, I'm, yeah. I, I, I pull for I pull for Illinois, man. I like to see them uh, be successful in the tournament. It's, it's this is gonna be our <clears throat> toughest matchup. I, Iowa State. I think we can handle Connecticut. I think we can handle San Diego. I think that Connecticut was another one of those teams where I was like, a one C, really? Like, yeah. all right, you, you like you said, they had a run in there, but it they was had like, a run. Right. A one seed is kind of crazy for for UConn, though. But I, I think that um, man, when you know what it is, you can tell when a team has players that are just gonna be in the NBA. Right. Like I watched Terrence Shannon Jr. and I watched people try to foul him, try to stop him from getting to the bucket, try mm-hmm. to slow him down. And how he adjusts mid-air. Now, I'm not going to say LeBron, like, because then his blasphemy in the world is ending and everything. But he moves to me very Anthony Edwards-like, might okay. I say. Very Paul George-like, mm. might I say. Where, like, people are like, I'm a foul use to make sure you don't get this. Okay. And then he's just like, I'm going to adjust my body real quick and make yeah. it an and one. And now I'm at the line for one more. Like, I love how he's playing. If Coleman Hawkins keeps showing up, I think we're in the Final Four. And uh, we might be uh, might be making a birth towards a national championship. Uh, mm. that, hey, listen, I'm, I'm trying to get those. I'm petitioning to get those reps back for Arizona. I don't think there was any <laughs> chicanery. <laughs> well, man, listen, I might. Be, you know what? It, it, it the whole the whole the whole setting of the whole deal in <laughs> Illinois. You know, it just it 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 it, it reeked of of Illinois is going to win this game somehow. Oh, oh, you know but, what I mean? And we, being in Phoenix, you know, you're not smelling that at all. Mm-mm, mm-mm, I'm smelling championships now. <laughs> Sick it is. Sick it but, is. But there, you oh, know what? They're, they're, both teams are all these teams are fun to watch. Yeah. Um, it's exciting. You you know you go from one game to the other to the X to the X. March Madness is uh, it's a really it's a really fun time. You know of the year, especially on the off season of football. You know, it brings a whole lot of excitement, and I I, I love it every year. You a uh, are you a YouTube TV guy? What you, you got YouTube TV at the house? Like I have okay. it. I do, have do you it. Do the four screens? Are you doing the four screens? Oh no, no. I'm more. You know what? It's it's. Uh, I have a few TVs. You know, and I'll no, watch I got it on different <laughs> TVs, or you know, or go to the bar. You know, the bars because because then you get the bars, you get different. You get you get different fans fan bases. You know you'll get a Illinois fan base. You'll get a UConn fan base. You know yeah. a UNC fan base. So you can hear them all rooting for each other. You and and that's that's what's funny about it. Like being at the bar, you just end up rooting for whoever's like the the most prevalent fan in there. Who's got the most energy? Play. Who's got the best energy? Yeah. Right. Unless you got to <laughs> play them. Like I was, I was sitting there and I was just like, this is. Hey, look. Let's go. Uh, who was you watching? I think Colorado was playing next. And I was like, what the heck is Colorado doing here? Man, I wanted Colorado to pull that out. Hey, I wanted them to win so bad. I <laughs> right? <felt> like... <laughs> that was good. I felt like there was a little bit of a lack of urgency on that on that last couple of minutes. It was like they, they got broken. Once once the, the, the shot started falling for Marquette, it was just like, yeah, oh, y'all are done. Y'all yeah. gave up on that. Stay- I, was, I was a little hurt. Yeah, they, and those last those last minutes or so, I did you know, even even the announcer was like, they're not using that these these seconds correctly. Yeah, you know. Well, I mean, what they they got the ball back. They were down, what are they down four, with yeah. ten seconds left, and they just ran to the right side and just right. like, waited for the clock to run down and shot a three. I was they like, said, yeah, you're supposed to. Yeah, that's what you're down four. It's a two possession. <laughs> ten seconds within four, but that's it's so crazy. I think that's the one part that people don't think about with sports is like you really can't just break a team they looked broken like you could just Mm. be like you're not the better team and finally they will believe it they Mm. absolutely looked broken Mm. when marquette came down and knocked down those two three i'll tell you i'll tell you who looked broken was james madison that's who looked broken (laughs) listen listen What were you expecting from James Madison, Doc? I mean, I'm listen. I, I like this. I like the underdogs. You know, I like the underdogs, and I like to see them. You know, like I, I want. I really wanted Washington State, Colorado. I wanted all the Pac-12 teams in the last year of the Pac. You know, to advance, and that you know they were uh, it was undefeated for that first round, which was cool, and then uh, and then lost some tight ones uh, in, the, in the next round. Yeah, they're. they're I think what. What I love to see that's actually happening this year, the Cinderella stories are cool, 
but you don't want to see the Cinderella stories in the Elite Eight or the Final Four more times than not. Because then they get there and it's like, it's a reason you were Cinderella because <laughs> there's a pumpkin coming your way. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean, like, so, I, so I, I like how it's playing out where we're getting a lot of the top six top, the top ones yep yeah, the top yeah, seeded yeah. seeded players playing each other it ain't got, I, I don't need it to be top one two right I, I would like some of them to get knocked out on the way so i can have maybe a little bit easier path but i don't care how i get there must be <laughs> there you go <laughs> hey, i don't Shoot. care how i get there must be sitting there i remember when uh when when y'all played the packers in the uh uh nfc title game everybody yeah. was sitting there it was like you got to go through the Packers. It's the only way to win. I was like, I don't care how we get to this goddamn Super Bowl. Just get Just there. Just get I, there. I care less. But it's about the principle. Ain't no principle in Super Bowls. Nobody sits there and reviews your championships and goes, but the principle. Right. No, no, no. Mm-mm. No, I'm just <laughs> no, sitting here. How I would, gets there. That ring would not come off my finger if I if I had that dog on Super Bowl <laughs> ring. But, but Lance, the principle. The principle. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but when I when I see Illinois, like the, the run that they've – they might be the darling. They might be the darling of, uh, of this tournament because I, I don't know if it was unexpected, but it was unexpected how well Terrence Shannon has played this consistently mm-hmm. for a lot of people. And so I love that. Uh, yeah. Arizona, your boys got to go through Clemson. You got to go through yeah. UNC. You feeling yeah. nervous at all? Little, little, uh, little nerves. Little... I mean, listen. It, it, last year, last year, Arizona was picked to win it. They they were knocked out the first game, you know. And so everybody is, you know, everybody's like, "Oh, your team broke my bracket. They broke my bracket." I said, "You know what? We didn't make it this year." I said, "We're gonna reload. We'll be back a one or two seed again next year." All right. We're a two seed, okay? We're back again next year. And that's the beauty of being an Arizona Wildcat. We're going to be back every doggone year. We got Tommy Lloyd, all right? You know what he did with the Zags. Now he's doing it with the U of A. <clears throat> we got a ton of talent. So it's, it's going to be fun to watch. I, I, I like our chances, but you, you never know. You never, never know. But as but, but long as they fight, we'll be all right. I think that's the, that's the part that's actually hilarious about March Madness is you you really just never know it somebody get hot yeah somebody, somebody like it like that if you get one NBA player like I'll tell you who for Illinois the mask um watching him play I was like when he went into the Big Ten tournament and he's been yeah. okay all season but when he played in the Big Ten tournament I was like yo he might make the NBA like he might actually end up being a role player in the league. Like I knew he right. had two, but like so like when you find players like that where you're just like yo that mug might actually be better than we all think. And so I, I love March Madness time. I think that there's something about just turning your TVs on and knowing there's going to be a game on. That's that's what it is for me. Now, the other thing right now, you know, is we've got to get this, the, the sports channels deal cleaned up. Like the, the, the streaming and it's playing on this or that or yeah. here and – like uh, and I know that right now they're they're all in the negotiation. They started the negotiation to try to try to say, okay, I think they're gonna they're gonna have a a, a, a sports channel that co- that carries all of the sports because having to go from here to there and then from they're not playing this and then later on I gotta have this subscription is is a pain in the butt. See that the the subscription we I I don't know has there been a game that's been on a specific subscription to this point? Well. Well, if you got sling, you know, you get a lot, you get a lot of the stuff, oh. but a lot of the stuff was on Paramount plus, And then you got, you know, and then it's just, it's, it's a pain in the butt. Sometimes. Yeah. See, I'm not, I'm not, well, YouTube TV for the most part, I think I've gotten all the games I've wanted to see or that, or that have been on. Um, but the, I know during the NFL season, I was just like, what are we doing? Dude? Like, well, I'm on Apple TV for like Monday, like a, time a on Thursday. Oh, like, oh, this I'm, is... I'm all over the place now. Like, my head is legitimately hurting trying to figure out where the heck I need to be watching half of this stuff at. And I, I, I yeah. don't know, man. They, this is a that is something that's going to be interesting to see if they actually get it cleaned up. Because, like, how do you? Because you know, well, they're in negotiation. Money. Yeah, but at the same time, you know, there's uh, is. As long as you have, if you have a space where you can view all the stations without having to bounce around, you know, I mean, because one of the problems too is that, you know, if you're, if you're bouncing around from one app to another, 
you know, and one of the apps you don't use out. a lot now. Exactly. I gotta now I gotta re put the password in, and then you know, oh shoot, you know, now I gotta say forgot password. Go to my email. My email's <laughs> gotta send it back to me. Give me a new password. Nope, can't use that one because you used that one before. Dang it. <laughs> Hey, that's the worst. When it's like, can't use a password you already use. You, I just. Yeah. Dang it, all right? Shoot. <laughs> you know that was the password. And then all of a sudden, you go back in and put the same password in. It works. Uh, or they give you this crazy suggestion <laughs> with the dash, you know, upper door, dash, dash. Like, that's so the computers can track everything that you're doing. Of course. Um, we definitely got to get that worked out. I'm not going to lie to you. I, listen, there's a. It's a different world for sports, but the fact that I can't just turn my TV on and say, this is on, I want to watch this, this is on. And for the most part, I can with YouTube TV, but or, or, with March Madness, I should say, but during the NFL season, like, I'm still not conditioned that way. I'd forget. Mm -hmm. I'd be like, I go to turn on Thursday Night Football, and it is the mad dash, because, like, now the game is on. You're like, oh, snap, I got to log in here, do this, make this happen. Like, it's... <sighs> Let's, let's 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 figure it out. Let's all get it together, especially for yes. uh, for for people who don't have all their passwords saved on all that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that are tired of creating new passwords. They're running out of brain space for it. Uh, let's finish it out here. You first off, I I gotta ask you this. Uh, we got we got an actual football season coming up here. I wanted to get your thoughts on this. You doing any UFL action? You tuning in on any UFL action? That's a negative, Ghost Rider. Oh damn. <laughs> That's a negative. You don't, you don't like the summer football? You're not watching any of it? Man, listen, I, I went to a, um, a spring training game uh -huh. last week. You know, the the uh, the the D-backs against the, the Oakland A's. Uh -huh. it, was a, it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. I'm going to enjoy baseball season. You know, Um the, uh, it, it, there's a lot of excitement here in the state of Arizona with the D-backs, you know, and of course I'm going to root on my, uh, my socks. Of course I'm going to root on my Cubs. And, and I, I know, I know, I know, but you know what? It's here. It's here. I, I can't do the, I don't know if you saw a hoodie in them. Like they were like, we're just going to root for the Padres. I was like, I want to so bad, but there's something inside me that's like, you're going to root for the White Sox. Shut up. And I'm like, I know, but yeah. I don't want to. <laughs> They don't want me. <laughs> it's tough, and I feel for I feel for the Sox fans because you know your 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 window your window passed just passed. I don't you know? even know if it was a window. That was like a, a peephole. Like was that a window? <laughs> Listen, I, I, it was a, it was a window because I remember being on the show with Lawrence Holmes, and Lawrence yeah. was like, "Hey, we're two years away. We're two years away." You know, and when that two year happened, I like the team was there. And it and I'm like they're not living up to the expectation. Yeah, but nope. Tony Larusa was there too. <laughs> took the Oakland A's. He took Tony, the St. Louis Cardinals. Tony, that's, that's a that's a younger Tony. That's a different Tony. We had the Tony that was like Tony, Tony, <laughs> huh, huh, put him in the third. Tony, what are you talking about? <laughs> You're yeah. doing the post game interview, Tony. You're doing the post game interview. Listen, yeah. He's a Hall of Fame manager. I love him. Jerry tried to fix a wrong. I didn't love that. Yeah. Your wrongs happened. You shouldn't have fired him in the first place. We could have had a lot more championships. Your wrongs happened. Live with him. Jerry, Tony Lobo. Uh, sorry, I'm going down a dark path here. Uh, the reason I brought up the UFL is because the NFL may be adopting a, uh, a kickoff rule that the UFL is using currently where basically they want to create more offense. They're trying to penalize a little bit more on if you kick it into the end zone. And so they want to create more uh, run backs, I should say. So they want to penalize it more. If you kick it into the end zone, it may start at the 30. Now, if they do push this rule through, which at this point, just why are we kicking off? But um, with that, the thought process of player safety came in. How are you going to keep players safe? If you do this, the UFL does this like where the two opposing D offense and defense kickoff teams are five yards apart. You kick it to the guy. Nobody can move until the uh, re returner touches the football. Is it time to just get rid of the kickoff rule? Because we're getting very gimmicky with this now. I don't know. I don't know that stuff. It frustrates me. Uh, they're, they're I, apparently they they're unanimous on the hip drop tackle ruling. 
Um, uh, it's a, I it's asked a lot about that during the season too. You said it's kind of just a, it, nobody intends to do it. It's just a freak thing that kind of happens when you're tackling somebody. I mean, you, it's so it's, it, you know, to, to, to play defense, man, is, is hard enough. Yeah. You know, it's hard enough in, in, in this, in this violent sport that we play to say, all right, now you can't, ta- you, there's so many different ways that you cannot tackle. You know, while running, while doing this at 100 miles an hour, so um, I, I don't know, man. We, we, but but I'll tell you what we do. You know, in 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 the in in the the same the NFL wants to make it more of an offensive game. You know what we defensive guys do? You know, we 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 figure it out. That's what we yeah. do. We figure it out because you'll go through a couple of years while we're while we're adjusting to the rule, and you'll have to hear the announcer say, "Oh." You'll, you won't hear any more uh, low-scoring games anymore. Those days are over. Once defenses figure it out, then you have a bunch of weeks where it's low-scoring games again because we yeah. figured it out. Yeah. You know, so you know the and that, and that to me is the the power of the defense and the defensive player. You know, you really want to respect the game, respect defense. I mean, listen, you talk about what maybe one year that Pat Mah- of the Pat Mahomes run that he's been on, where there was like a ridiculously scoring Super Bowl. Yeah. Um, outside of that, his defenses have had to step up. <laughs> I mean, like, yeah. last year in the Super Bowl, Chris Jones not being on the team changes everything, but yeah. instead he's on the team and you get the Super Bowl win because you forced them to kick a field goal. And Pat Mahomes, mm-hmm. of course, goes down and scores. But, like, it is something masterful that that you see where no matter what changes they make, the best athletes in the world on the defensive side just go, that's stupid. Like what? Well, like I remember when uh, when they started flagging for hitting QBs or sacking QBs, basically, is you had to like lay them down, tuck them in at night, read them a little bedtime story, give them a little hot cocoa, and then it counts as a sack. I remember like the players in the league kind of being like, "What do y'all want me to do? Like I'm not supposed to hit them? Like I've been trained my whole life to hit people." This is it's right. It's what you know. We want to protect the quarterback, protect the game, protect offense, and all that stuff, but. You know, again, um, credit to all the defensive players out there that, that, that you know, listen, we don't have time to complain. We don't have time to cry about this. You know, this is the game. This is the way you want this game to be played. We're going to yeah. figure it out. We're not only going to figure it out, but we're also going gonna to shut you down again. We're going to continue to be consistent defensively. How do we get Brady on the rules committee? Because Brady was like, listen, I grew up in a time where you could not throw the football over the middle because Ray Lewis was back there because Lance Briggs was back there. You couldn't. How do we get Brady? He was like, they, y'all making this game way too soft. It, it, it is. It is. You know, it, it is. But, you know, there's still ways to hit. You still see – I'm starting to see more more big hits, you know, oh, because yeah. guys are – they're 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 moving the target. They're moving their target area and they're hitting correctly, you know. So it's – um, look – Look, I, I, um, I just, I just credit to all, you know, not even just defensive players, offensive guys, because it's not an easy thing to go out there to do this stuff, you know. And you, they do it, they, they love it, you know. And I know how much love that goes into this, this thing, you know. And and I, and I, and I love that you get, you get paid for it, you know. And you get, you can take care of your families, provide, and all that good stuff. And you're getting paid even more and more, you know. And 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 for the guys that played before me whose sons came through and the guys that played with me whose sons I see are coming through now, you know, you know, I I just love seeing as you see uh, Jerry Rice's son, you know I mean? All these guys get opportunities. They're getting opportunities that they're earning, you know, and, and, um, and so it's just a, it's a, it's a, it's a joy to watch. It's gotta be tough to follow them footsteps though. You're not going to catch them. No one's going to, you're not going to catch them. No, no, but I think I, I'll say this about Brendan, and then we got to get him out of here. I think he's done a masterful job of just kind of like not – he's not a bad player. He's actually one of the better receivers you can take in his draft if we're being 100% honest. But you almost never hear like keep an eye on him because he's Jerry Rice's kid, and so like that's what you should expect from – like most players, kids usually get that where it's like, Right, Kyle Long, you, oh, well, Howie Long's kid. You know what kind of mindset he brings. Like, we haven't heard that a ton with Brendan Rice. Maybe it's because his dad is like, like, maybe nobody has the expectation with him. Because <laughs> it's just like, no one's catching Jerry. <laughs> no one's catching Jerry. They're not. They're not. I think you, I think you, 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 I think there's a level of, listen, I'm, you know, my dad's, my dad texts me and ends his conversations with goat, with a goat emoji. 
You know what I mean? Like, I'm going to come out here. I'm going to do my best. I'm going to try to be consistent, you know, and maybe, maybe stack up some some uh, all pros and Pro Bowls and maybe get in the Hall of Fame too. But, uh, yeah, yeah, we won't be getting the GOAT back. He goes, uh, he, goes <laughs> he, he texts his daddy. He's like, Dad, how did you do this? And he just responds, back. <laughs> yeah, man. It's, <laughs> but it's cool, though, you know. I, I mean, shoot, Marvin Harrison Jr.'s son. Now he, now he, he might, he, he might outbeat him. Hey, now. listen, hey, listen, right, listen. Right, Jack was mad at me. I was like, I think he gonna be. Uh, I think he might be ten times the player his dad is if he put in the right situation. Ooh, ten times that he's listen. his dad was his dad, his was, dad was a monster. Right. No, no. I, okay. I think we. I think we'll be talking about him as one of those guys, like we talk about Tyreek, like we talk about Devonte, like we talk about like. It should number be number one wide receiver we, in the NFL guy. We should be, but a lot of people told, talked about uh, Odell Beckham Jr. after the catch. You know, there was no consistency there. He wasn't That's consistent. True. There's That's a lot of true. things that have to happen for you to be consistent, and health is number one. Health, and you've got to stay out of where trouble. He, where, where's he slated right now? I think he's slated to Arizona. He's up there. If, if Arizona holds on to that pick. Right. Oh, but if they well, if they trade out, he gets he gets to go out there with uh because they got rid of all their wide receivers with old uh not a uh, not Burrow uh, Justin Herbert. That's five. Yeah, you get yeah. to pair up with Justin. That's not a bad situation to be in coming into the league. Do you go to L.A. Be in L.A. <laughs> oh boy, that's oh, a dangerous man. place to be in. That's Hollywood now. Hey, don't don't. Uh, now see, you got to keep your nose clean too. That's where it get dangerous out there. Literally. Yeah. Literally, you gotta keep them. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Stay away from that booger. They, hey. That booger sugar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, I wasn't going there, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get up out of here for Michael Irving show. Appreciate you guys for tuning in. <laughs> <laughs> Subscribe to the page. Leave that five star review. Y'all know what to do. Michael, it's jokes. I love you, man. You're very passionate about your team, even though they never yes, win. You are. You. Hit yes, that you like are. button, subscribe to the page. For Lance Briggs, I'm Pat the Designer. Y'all stay safe out there, Chicago. Bear Don. Peace. Peace.